Hello, this is Chris Park. Um, this is just a for fun video more so than anything else because it shows some debugging action and a kind of humorous bug, honestly, um, that I just thought it looked neat. So I thought, why not make a quickie video? Um, basically, what this is, is I am working on the linear linear interpolation or lerping between um, ships um, where the shot is fired and where it's heading. And uh, before, uh, it was always coming directly out of the entire squad and going from the squad to squad, and it was not interpolating to the uh, final position of the individual ship either. Um, you know, and that was always just kind of a temporary thing. Now, that's what the underlying simulation uh, does, which for efficiency purposes, we wouldn't want to stop doing that. Um, but for visual purposes, we knew we'd have to essentially lie to you. We joke about it as being like the, you know, Keith's job is to do the actual simulation and my job is to do the kind of liar, liar interface on top of it that gives you a prettified version of what the simulation is doing, which incidentally, since the simulation is running at, I think it's like 10 frames a second, uh, might be 20 now, but I, th I think we're trying to get away with 10. Um, it's a very coarse simulation. It doesn't need to be any more. We don't gain anything from being, uh, you know, having a higher frame rate on the simulation. All we get is CPU bog down. So that means that individual shops, shots would jump from here to here to here to here if we didn't already have uh, lerping, the linear interpolation on whatever your frame rate is that you're actually getting. Um, during gameplay. And so if you're getting 80 frames a second on your computer and I'm getting 200 on mine and um, somebody else is getting 20 on theirs, um, probably the actual simulation itself is still able to run at that 10, um, which it's run on another thread anyway, and uh, a couple other threads, uh, thanks to Keith. So for all of us, um, if we're playing multiplayer together, we'd all see the actual frame rate and it would look, you know, buttery smooth for the ones that are above 60. And um, it would look choppier on the one that's 20, but it wouldn't slow down, unlike AI War Classic. It wouldn't get out of sync. Um, and um, the, you know, it would still look a lot smoother at, it would be a smoother 20 frames a second than a true locked 20 frames a second is. And so, um, this has been me working on some of the liar liar stuff um and what you can see is that um as things shoot at the um as things shoot at the arc in particular you'll notice that their green targeting lines go up and the shots actually start coming off of what you think of as the uh basic playing uh lanes and for some of these ships that are set below like the bombers it drifts below um i wanted to get the shots in place before i put the actual squads back flying around a bunch because um <laughs> it's hard enough to keep track of what these things are doing when they're targeting individual ships as it is um as you can see with trying to look at all these lines and so on and um trying to have the actual spline flying around stuff for the individual ships and keep track of that as well uh, would just be a nightmare. Now I've got little debugging flags that let me turn on and off things as I desire anyway. Um, but still, I wanted to start with this. And then the nice thing is that uh, once I have the actual ships within the squads flying back around, um, then it will, you know, knock on wood, just work, because the position of a ship is the position of the ship, and it's lurping between uh, those positions one way or the other. So there's no reason it shouldn't just work after that point. What that will mean, of course, is that uh, if the ship is flying around in a variety of positions, then the um, shots themselves are going to kind of drift a bit as they fly, and that's just 
that's just unavoidable. Uh, there's no other way to handle the interpolation. Well, okay, there is one other way to handle the interpolation. And that is if I could know the exact precise position of the target ship at the time of firing, which the exact precise position of that target ship is based on not only if the squad that the ship is part of might move, or if the um, uh, and and then looking forward as to where that ship will be on its spline um, orbit. Now I could look forward in time on the spline orbit because that's kind of a linear thing, so I could predict that, but I can't necessarily predict where the squad movement is going to be. Um, and the best thing to do really is to make it so that these shots don't move so slowly as they do now. It's useful for debugging purposes and so on, but uh, I don't know, it feels a little slow. Um, you know, or the shots just drift a little, I don't know, we'll see. Um, there's certainly a variety of ways of making that happen. Um, the uh, interesting thing about the current bugs that I'm dealing with is you'll see Look at these uh, shots that kind of drift over to one place and then make a U-turn. Um, the lines kind of distract from it, but it's a little hypnotic, actually, what happens, because they come out and they go back and they come out and they come back and see these ones that are kind of curving in weird. And um, the blue lines are where they came from. The green lines are what they're targeting. And then uh, there's a little marker circles around them to show kind of what mode the shot is in. If it's doing um, initial lerping or if it's doing uh, final lerping to a particular position or what. And uh, um, the little yellow lines show uh, its connection to where the local, the actual underlying sim position is. And so it wasn't apparent to me what the heck was going on with this until I made all these lines. And um, uh, in, in this particular debugging mode, but what I've discovered is that because these shots are pooled, um, you know, for efficiency's sake, uh, with the with the actual shot objects and so forth, they're held in a pool, and we put them back in the game when we um, want to fire them again. And so that means they're reused. What's happening is that rather than jumping immediately to their position they're being fired from, they are starting at whatever position they happen to be at previously, and then they are lerping to their new position. And so that's where the U-turns and so forth come in from, is that, um, the arbitrary location that they were coming from makes them zip over from the side. So that's where these little initial there, 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 little initial zips come from is them getting onto their actual course. Now there's some stuff at the end that doesn't make sense to me yet about why they're not always coming straight in all the way to the target that they're supposed to hit. Um, I think some of it has to do with that if, if the target dies, but, um, doesn't really matter. I'll I'll figure that out. Um, there are some issues with when things hit uh, force fields on their way to get to target ships. I need some green ones coming in this way. I'll move these guys over as a group. Um, here's some. Uh, so you'll see these things. They slow down and they hit there. And you know, oopsies. Um, they're supposed to be hitting the force field, and of course, in the sim, they are. Uh, but there's some funkiness with how they slow down and then they disappear. I have a failsafe in there, so they'll disappear no matter what after three seconds. But um, with these ones that are trying to target, for instance, this squad right here, and they're coming and they're bunching up here and they're stopping, this is what they should be doing, but they shouldn't be slowing down like this. They should be keeping their existing momentum and then die. Uh, don't 
don't wait so long. This actually, that's not three seconds of, of easing in. It's just, uh, it's just coming in much too slow is really what it is. Because the lerping is going at one speed here, and then uh, it's going at a completely other speed once, once it starts easing in there. So I think that's ultimately what the problem is. So probably what I need to do is... Uh, keep track of the maximum speed that it's going along its path while it's uh, inbound and then make sure it doesn't drop below that when it's doing its final easing into a force field because the force fields and so forth add a last little hiccup to uh, these things. So um, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, and you see how all these are coming over. These are shots that were over there at the other things that are being shot. Now watch this. Should be a bunch of things coming from right here. See that? There's the pooling in action. It's a lot easier to see. And then because I went over, uh, there were more shots fired here than were fired against the um, warp gate. It then started having to pull from other stuff that was older in the pool that was from over here and still over here. So it's kind of interesting to see. Um, how that worked, but without debugging lines, I mean, I never would have figured something like that out. And um, you know, this is the you know the repair lines from the, um, or actually those were capture lines from the um, um, arc. So at any rate, I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing to show because um, this kind of the nuts and bolts bits that you don't get to see usually so um longer video than i'd intended but hopefully you enjoyed thanks